Hello, welcome to an introduction to the wavelet transform. This video will give you a clear understanding of the mathematics of the wavelet transform, as well as a clear intuition of how it works and its unique capabilities in signal processing. But first, I'll cover some more basic knowledge before we talk about wavelets. So we'll start with the Fourier transform. As you may know, the Fourier transform provides frequency information of a signal that represents its frequencies and their magnitude. It does not tell us when in time these frequency components exist. So the transform is ideal for stationary signals. Stationary signals are ones that do not change with time. So they have a constant frequency throughout. So this Fourier transform lacks capability to provide frequency information for a localized signal region in time. So the short time Fourier transform, STFT, was developed to overcome the poor time resolution of the Fourier transform. What it gives us is a time frequency representation of the signal. With the short time Fourier transform, we assume some portion of the non-stationary signal is stationary. We then take a Fourier transform of each stationary portion along the signal and add them up. So here we have a non-stationary signal. We've divided this, the signal into its stationary parts. So each frequency in these portions is constant, okay? So the signal increases with frequency, but it has these stationary sections. What we do with the STFT is we take a window function of fixed length and move it along the signal from start to end and take a Fourier transform at each stationary section. Okay, like this. Our window function is a rectangle and we multiply it by a signal at each section. So the window function is a function that's zero valued outside its given interval. So when the waveform is multiplied by the function, the product is zero valued outside that interval. So when we multiply the signal by the rectangle, only the overlap is included of our signal. The rest of the signal becomes zero, which allows us to take the Fourier transform of that given section. That is the STFT. This is what it looks like mathematically. W is our window function, okay, which can be translated through time via our translation parameter tau. Comparing the STFT to the Fourier transform, the only difference is the window function. The signal was multiplied by the window function, and then we take the Fourier transform. But now the output involves some time localization. The Fourier transform only provided frequencies. We now have frequency and time localization. What does the STFT look like as a 3D output? Well, if we have a signal with four stationary sections of different frequency, we then get a 3D output of amplitude of the frequencies, the frequency, and then the time they occur in the signal. So we have four peaks located at different times, depending on when these stationary frequency components occur in our signal. These other four peaks aren't included in the signal, so you don't have to worry about them. But you can see that we do have a peak for each stationary section, but they aren't singular definite peaks. They're distributions in time and frequency. So really, there's an uncertainty in the frequency and time, the frequency of the components and the time at which they exist in the signal. So this is a problem. We have uncertainty. This brings us on to limitations. The window function is finite, so the frequency resolution compared to the Fourier transform is going to decrease. The fixed length of the window means time and frequency resolutions will also be fixed for the entire length of the signal. This comes off a main principle in physics, in which we cannot know what frequencies exist 
at what time instance, but we can know what frequency bands, what frequency ranges is it exist at what time intervals. And it's given by this equation. If we have a higher time resolution or smaller time uncertainty, the greater the frequency uncertainty is, the lower the frequency resolution. And it's bounded by one over four pi. So this is a principle in physics we cannot escape from, but we can improve on it. So looking at the frequency time plane for our um, short time Fourier transform, we see that at all increasing times and higher frequencies, the frequency and time resolution are fixed, given by squares of equal area. A narrow window will give good time resolution but bad frequency resolution. On the other hand, if our window is wide, we get poor time resolution, but good frequency resolution of our signal. Now this fixed frequency resolution for our short time Fourier transform isn't particularly good when we're looking at these two reasons. Low frequency components of sound and signals often last a long period of time. So our time uncertainty is really small because they do last a long time. So really, we need a high frequency resolution that is required to resolve this correctly. High frequency components, on the other hand, appear as short bursts in signals, invoking the need for higher time resolution. The STFT does not do this very well at all, but the wavelet transform improves on this. The wavelet transform results in analyzing a signal into different frequencies at different resolutions. This is known as multi-resolution analysis. So looking at the frequency time plane for our wavelet transform, we see that there is good time resolution, but poor frequency resolution at high frequencies. So up the frequency axis with high frequencies, the vertical lines are much denser. So that means good time resolution, but there are barely any horizontal lines, meaning low frequency resolution. However, at low frequencies, we have better frequency resolution, more horizontal lines, but poor time resolution. We literally have no vertical lines. So what does the wavelet transform look like? Here it is, it's a integral. It is the continuous wavelet transform. We still have our signal f of t, but this time it's not multiplied by an exponential, it's multiplied by the complex conjugate of psi. Psi is our wavelet, which we'll come on to in a minute. One of the parameters now is the scale parameter, which is 1 over frequency. So before we had tau and omega, but now we have the inverse of frequency, which replaces omega. So what is the wavelet? A wavelet is a small wave, such as these ones. And the wavelet is now our new basis function. Remember from the Fourier transform, the basis function was our sines and cosines. But now for a wavelet transform, we use a wavelet. And the wavelet acts as our window function. So we can change the width of the wavelet and its central frequency as we move it across our signal by changing s. This is called scaling. So an expanded wavelet is better at resolving low frequency components of the signal with bad time resolution, which we looked at before. This corresponds to large values of s. Remember, s was the inverse of frequency. Shrunken wavelet is better at resolving high frequency components of the signal with good time resolution. This corresponds to small values of s. So now with the wavelet transform, we can change the width of our window function, which helps us to resolve high frequency components and low frequency components with good resolutions, both. So all the windows that are used are the dilated or compressed and shifted versions of the mother wavelet psi of t. Going back to our integral, we see that the wavelet is translated across our signal using tau, like our window function, 
but it's also scaled by dividing by s. So this stretches and compresses the wavelet. Large values of s correspond to lower wavelet frequencies. So when the wavelet matches, when the frequency of a wavelet matches part of the signal with very similar frequency, we get high outputs of f. f represents our wavelet coefficients. Approximation coefficients are wavelet coefficients but represent the low frequency of our signal. Detail coefficients represent the high frequency components of our signal, which we'll look at more later. Here's an animation of the wavelet transform. The wavelet is multiplied by a signal at each location in time, and every time we do that, we increase the scale. So we go from high frequencies to low frequencies of the wavelet. Okay? High frequency wavelets will pick up the high frequencies of our signal. Low frequency of the wavelets will pick up the low frequencies of our signal. We end up with a theodu plot of s, tau and amplitude. So like before, we have tau, but now we have s, 1 over frequency. Unlike the STFT, which plotted frequency. So let's move on to the discrete wavelet transform. Calculating wavelet coefficients at every possible scale produces a lot of data. If s and tau are chosen to be discrete, then the wavelet transform won't generate huge amounts of data. If s and tau are based on powers of 2, which is called dyadic, then analysis becomes much more efficient and accurate. So this is the discrete wavelet transform. We have a representing tau and b is s. We've gotten rid of the integral and replaced it with the sum, which you'd expect for discreteness. a and b are now, as I said, dyadic. j is the scale index and k is our wavelet transformed signal index. So computationally, how is the discrete wavelet transform computed? Well, this is computed by multi-level decomposition. In this, our signal is passed into low-pass and high-pass filters. Low-pass filters will pass our low-frequency components of the signal, but they're going to reject our high-frequency components. Okay. So A represents our approximation coefficients, D represents our detail coefficients. So the low pass portions, approximation coefficients, are iteratively filtered by the same process each time. So they keep going through the low pass filters to disregard the high frequency components at each level. Okay, the high pass portions are the detail coefficients. So the number of coefficients, number of approximation and detail coefficients, halve for each decomposition level. This is called the decimated discrete wavelet transform. So by the end of the process, we end up with sets of approximation and detail coefficients. So in future videos, we're going to look at the discrete wavelet transform and multi-level decomposition in more detail, as well as the approximation and detail coefficients. I will also introduce you to stationary wavelet transforms because this all leads into my current research I'm doing at the moment, which is on signal denoising of ECG and MCG signals, which involves taking a wavelet transform of a signal, applying some thresholds and stuff like that, and then outputting a denoised ECG signal. So I'll see you in the next videos.